you know, I just had, uh, oh, I forgot my name. <laughs> I'm at an age where I always forget my name. Uh, the New Caribou, uh, the Honorable Sir David, Emperor of Salt Lake City, Sultan of Utah, uh, spiritual advisor to uh, questioning Mormons, the Bard, extraordinaire, supreme being, Alpha and Omega. Um, someone just requested a, a story for my life. No one gives a shit but me, but evidently there's one guy out there that wants to hear um, a story of my life. You know what came to mind? <clears throat> I was getting married at BYU uh, in 1972, and um, I was poor. I mean, I was middle class, but when I went to BYU, I was there on a, a Pell Grant, and I had no money. Well, I decided to marry um, my first wife, Janice. And um, we had no money and we had no place to live. Now, you got to remember, this makes sense to Mormons. To normal people, they're going to say, you got shit for brains. I go, yeah, we do. Now, my dad was a fanatical Mormon. He was the Sunday school superintendent. What an asshole. <laughs> he molested my sister for a couple of years and the, and the neighborhood children for a couple of more years. And when we told the bishop and the state president personally face to face, they go, Hey, <laughs> what do you want us to do? <laughs> Maybe you could excommunicate me. Oh, no, we're not going to excommunicate. Okay. So, anyway, uh, I got an idea. Now, I didn't know I was bipolar uh, back in those days. Um, I really believed I was normal. <laughs> Since then, there's no doubt in anyone's mind, I've never been normal. Well, I decided that I wasn't going to pay rent to go to BYU. I didn't want the rich to become richer and me, the poor, <laughs> to become poor. So I had this brilliant idea before I got married, and I thought what I'd do is buy a mobile home to live in while I was at BYU. And uh, I thought that was a cool idea, and I looked all over um, Utah, but they were expensive in Utah because everybody was poor and wanted to live in one. So the prices were up. So the Bard, <laughs> Mr. Bard, decided to go to, uh, my home state was California, that's where I was raised, and I decided to look for a mobile home there in California that I could pull to Utah and then live in. Well, <laughs> My dad is bipolar, too, and um, when you get two bipolar people having a, the same idea, you've got stereophonic assholes, <laughs> and we didn't know. I'd say, I think it's good, and you go, yeah, it's a good idea. So <laughs> we were in the Mormon bubble. We didn't go to outside people uh, who would have said, hell no, don't do this. So I looked around and I found an ad in the paper that a uh, mobile home was for sale in um, Santa Paula, California, which is just over the hill from Ojai, where I was raised. And so Dad and I went over to uh, Santa Paula to check this out. Now this trailer was 40 feet long. Now it's not a double wide and it's not, <laughs> you know, a 65 foot trailer, but hell, 40 feet is a long trailer. It had uh, one bedroom a bathroom, a kitchen, and a living room. And it was an 8 wide, 8 by 40. It's these old people in it that were dying. <laughs> I didn't feel bad. I wanted a house for me and my new wife that had a bed in it. That's all I was interested in in 1972. Well, anyway, um, we, we made a deal on the house and uh, decided uh, to pay them the money, and we did. Well, now, you're all too young. You have no damn idea what a Dodge Dart, D-A-R-T. They've got a new one out. Chrysler just put out a new Dodge Dart 2, I think. Uh, but the Dodge Dart 1 <laughs> was like a Hudson Rambler, uh, an Edsel, <laughs> and um, a Studebaker all mixed into one. Well, it had a, what we thought was a big engine. It had a V8 engine in it. But it only had a two-barrel carburetor. Well, in those days, uh, we thought that was hot. <laughs> so, what we did is we backed up. In fact, I went down and have a hitch put on the car. And the welder said, well, what do you want? And I said, a trailer hitch. And he says, what are you pulling? And I said, a 40-foot trailer. 
he put his torch down <laughs> and said, I'm not putting a hitch on here for a 40-foot trader. I said, why not? <laughs> See, bipolar. <laughs> we think it's okay. She says, you'll have to sign a waiver. I said, hey, I'll sign anything. So I signed a waiver, and he put a hitch on, <laughs> and it looked like one of the hitches on a freight train. <laughs> so we take the, the Dodge Dart over to the trailer park, and um, I back it up uh, to where the hitch is, and my dad started to crank down the, uh, the trailer so that the hitch would uh, get on the ball. And um, so... <laughs> As he was cranking it down, <laughs> Jesus, all of these old people came out. Now, they were normal. These were normal people. They came out and said, holy shit, watch this. <laughs> They've been pulling traders for years. I never pulled a trader. So I'm, hey, how hard can it be? So my dad is putting, I don't know how many pounds, a thousand pounds or two thousand pounds of pressure down on the hitch. Well, the back of the Dodge Dart, I was in the driver's seat, was getting lower and lower. <laughs> and the front was getting higher and higher. And damn, I didn't know the front wheels <laughs> would come off the ground. It's a bitch to steer something like that when the front tires don't touch the ground. I'm telling you right now, you ever get in that situation, if you got no tires on the ground, it's a bitch to turn left and to turn right. So we, we cranked it back up, and the wheels came down, and Dad and I looked at each other. <laughs> Bipolar meeting of the minds. And I said, well, I think we need a little more weight in the back of that trailer. My dad goes, now there's an idea. It was a bipolar idea, but we did it. We got a whole bunch of cinder blocks uh, from the local cinder block company, and we opened the back door of this trailer, and we started putting in tons of cinder blocks. Like, you know, an 18-wheel truck would carry tons of cinder blocks. So we put it in the back bedroom, and it was a pretty clever idea because the front now became lighter. So we lowered it down, and all the old people were still standing out there, and they would come up to me and say, what are you going to do? move that across town I said no I'm driving it to Utah <laughs> those old people you know they're holding their hearts laughing and and they're they're making fun of me and jokes he said you'll never make it to Utah and I said hey I'm bipolar I can make it anywhere Kolob even so we lowered it down and I'll be damned the front wheels of the car stayed on the ground now we thought this was a technological advance <laughs> so the trader did have brakes on it, and I and I put a big wire underneath the trader all the way up to the car and put car trader brakes on so that I could uh, have some control of how quick I could stop. Well, we started to leave the trader park, and the, and the old people are all going, Bye! Like they're never going to see us again in this life. <laughs> and here's this little Dodge Dart pulling this bastard long trailer. And we would go down the street and people would put their hands up cheering and sometimes their finger up because they couldn't get around us. So I'm driving out of uh, Santa Paula, California with this piece of shit that hasn't been on the road for 40 years. It's an old trailer. And the Dodge Dart, the old uh, heat gauge on it, went right just before red. And I said, that's good. That's good. It's not on red, so <laughs> how bad can it be? <laughs> so we're driving, and uh, I was—I've been a pretty good driver. I've driven bus, and uh, I've only had one accident. I backed into a bus <laughs> once. So anyway, I was driving and coming up to a, a red light. We'd only gone down the road five or six miles. I was coming up to a red light, and I stepped on the brake of the car and. You could feel your house just pushing us. So I reached down and grabbed the trailer brake and pull on it, and the house just kept pushing. <laughs> I go, holy shit, we're not going to stop. So I'm honking the horn and flashing the lights, and everybody that came to the intersection could see this son of a bitch coming from three miles away, and they were already stopped. They go, <laughs> we're not even going in to that intersection. It's going to be way too dangerous with a 19-year-old kid driving a 40-foot, I don't know, 8,000-pound trailer. So 
I just put on the brakes of the Dodge Dart, and it just started skidding. And it skidded right through the intersection, and about 200 yards down past the light, and I pulled over. And I looked at my bipolar father, and uh, I said, this ain't good. And he goes, well, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> I go, jeez. So I climbed under the trailer, and that wire that I'd hung under the trailer caught on something, and it broke and pulled apart. So I, you know, I had my uh, mas uh, masking, not masking tape, um, duct tape, and I rolled it up, and the brakes were working again. Well, we started out over um, Lancaster, California, and the heat gauge, <laughs> when it was going 30 or 40 miles an hour on flat ground at sea level, the heat gauge was over so close to the red, I had to turn my head a little bit and say, it ain't on the red, it ain't on the red. <laughs> so, pretty soon we'd be driving and just starting up some of these little hills over there, and you couldn't see out the windshield. The steam, I thought we were at the, the, the ocean and the fog had rolled in. And I looked at my dad and said, what do you think? And he says, well, at least we still got water. There can't be steam if there's no water. I go, hey, now there's a mechanic. <laughs> well, I stopped. And now we have an emergency where we have to carry water with us. So I get this 55-gallon barrel uh, empty and I fill the damn thing up with water so that every time we boil over I could go back in the trailer and get fresh water and put it back in the radiator. That trailer only went one hour or an hour and a half on flat ground before I had to go get water. Now we started <laughs> to get gas. I forget where we went to first get gas and I wasn't used to being a truck driver as high as that thing was and of course we didn't take the TV antenna off it. We, we thought that was a good deal. <laughs> Bipolar we look at each other and go hey it's a free antenna. So, yeah why take it down it's not going to be bothering. So, But when you go into a gas station <laughs> that has a roof on it, it does bother the trip. So I pull in and there goes the antenna and I said well uh, you know, it's still hooked. It's bent down, but maybe when we get there, we can set it back up. And I pull into the first gas station, which it only went like 75 or 100 miles on a full tank of gas. And I had that gas pedal on the floor 90% of the time, and that little engine just screaming and screaming, pulling that uh, rig, as the as the truckers would say. And when I pulled into the gas station, you had to be careful because uh, it, it did have a high roof and uh, you had to park the car close enough to the hose that you could actually put gas in the tank. Well, the guy comes out in those days, those the days the guy comes out, he pumps the gas himself. And he doesn't even come out of the station without laughing his ass off. He goes, God, I've never serviced anything like this before. So he comes up to the window and he says, uh, how can I help you? other than get you a brain <laughs> fill her up <laughs> well back in those days they'd give you free dishes or a free frisbee or something for buying gas at their gas station so he said hey how far are you guys gonna go with this big thing I said to Utah <laughs> he was about to give me the gas for free just to get that out of his station so we filled it up and there, there's another uh, amount of money and and at any time I stopped, I always put water in the radiator. Well, let me tell you something. Las Vegas, <laughs> there were some mountains to get into Las Vegas. And I'll tell you, I know from personal experience how steep the mountains are in southern Utah, in St. George, and uh, in Cedar City. They're some of the steepest hills. They're like 12% grades. Well, there's one thing, that, well, there's two things that's a problem pulling a rig like that. When you go downhill, you can't slow down. The train is pushing you. <laughs> and you want to get a little bit of a run at the bottom, but, you know, how fast are you going to push that rig? More than 35 or 40? So you start up the other side, you don't go 15 feet, and you're on a 12% grade. And boy, you shift that little Dodge Dart down in the low. You put the gas pedal to the metal and you hold it there. And that little two-barrel carburetor is going, what the hell? Where's my big brother? Get me a four-barrel or two fours on here. So, you know, we'd go up there at six miles, eight miles an hour. And I said to my dad, 
around again. You don't put me and my dad together. There's just no common sense there. And I said, well, can I ride in the trailer? He said, hey, I think so. I, I think so, too. <laughs> so when we stopped and got water, I decided to go uh, into the trailer. So I opened the door to sit down at the, um, the uh, kitchen cafe, which was right there at the bar uh, window, where you could look out and see the hitch. Now, one of the things that I thought was cool is sitting there in a, in a mobile home <laughs> going down the highway and people would go by and wave. Hey, we're okay. We're okay. No problem. We're going to get there. This is Smokey and the Bandat. <laughs> we're not the Bandit. We're the Bandat. <laughs> so I rode there for, well, probably two hours. We went 20 miles. <laughs> it was the longest that anyone rode there. Oh, my God. It took us like a day and a half, two days, to drive a, an 11-hour trip. So, anyway, we, uh, we did get to uh, Utah, and we pulled that in the mobile home park, and all the old people came out again in Utah to say, where the hell did you come from? And we said, California, and they go, no, you couldn't have come from California with that. Well, we did, and, and we backed it in, and... Um, set it up and Janice and I and Michelle my first baby uh, we lived in there while I was a, a freshman and sophomore uh, at BYU so um, it was creative and uh, by the time we had gotten it to Utah we put enough gas in that car and oil it took oil about every hundred miles <laughs> and it just smoked all the way to Utah in those days they didn't have any rules about smoke thank God and that car went another 50 or 60 thousand miles when we took it back to California and my dad used it for the family so um, we figured when I sat down with the calculator that we'd put enough gas and oil uh, into that vehicle to get it there plus the uh, cost of the trailer uh, that I could have lived in Utah in an apartment uh, that had a real stove and real heat and a bathroom that had a bathtub bigger than a sink uh, for four years. I could have graduated from my... But I said to Dad, you know, we needed this experience. You're damn right we did. Nobody else could have done it. And, well, nobody else wanted to do it, Dad. He goes, well, if they tried it, they would have never made it. So, anyway, uh, the bipolar people do have to hold the record for the most shit you can get into. And um, we had to live in that thing two and a half years or so uh, to make it worth our while dragging it up there. And uh, the heater didn't work in it. The hot water heater had two gallons of hot water in it. The bathtub was so small, all we could do was wash diapers in the bathtub. And uh, the kitchen had to have propane for the tanks, and we couldn't afford that either. And the damn antenna, when I set it up, the son of a bitch fell right off. So it was no deal. I was going to go back to, to Santa Paula and talk to that guy and say, you know, the antenna broke. I want, you know, $20 back. So anyway, you want a story of my life? <laughs> there it is. You don't want to be married to me, and you don't want me your father. Uh, my kids sing that little song all the time. If you take us to Walmart, you're not our dad. <laughs> and my wife says, if you go outside, you're not my husband. <laughs> hey, I do the best I can. Mental illness, I love the Mormons. <laughs> I fit right in. <laughs>